the great Kevin Holland. What a performance. The biggest name of your career thus far, and what a spectacular performance. DC and I were saying, I can't remember ever seeing a guy hurt someone like that off their back. Nico Price. With a with an up kick. Well, yeah, Nico but not Price. With a punch. No, Nico Price did it with the hammer fist from the side. Uh, oh, that's Randy Brown. right. That's right. You're right. Yeah, that's Jim, what I was thinking when I was leaning to the side, too. The way you connected with that right hand, so much torque behind it, but but you were threatening him on the ground as well. <laughs> well, me and Travis, we were going back and forth. He was like, the smarter thing to do was uh, to avoid the ground. And I agree with him 100%. But, uh, I always feel like my coach is uh, one of the best in the world, especially when it comes to grappling. And you guys all know that. One of the ultimate fighter, all submissions pretty much. So if I can't go out there and start subbing people and giving them problems on the ground, then then maybe I shouldn't be a black belt new Travis Luter. So if I can give somebody like Jacare problems on the ground, then I guess I deserve my black belt. No doubt you do, and Travis Luter is a legend. Now, Kevin, you are one of the most exciting guys in this division and also one of the most charismatic. When you're inside the octagon and you're talking smack to your opponents and you're having these conversations, is this is this planned? Is this natural? Is this just you? It's natural, man. I ain't gonna lie. I was in the back. We had to take that drug test and I had to drink so much water. I was peeing like crazy, but if I didn't feel like I had to pee, I felt like I wanted to go to sleep. I was just chilling, you know? Uh, but boy, when that last fight was over and they said it was time for me to fight, I got alive, you know? It's like, uh, I just love to fight, you know? It's like, uh, I know my son doesn't want me to say this right now, but. You know, I know Chimaev was supposed to fight December 19th. You know, he fights at 85 and 70. Come back up to 85. <laughs> so you're trying to set up a Chimaev fight for a week from today. And that's what he does, right? Yes. I, I think I do it better. Who's fought the most this year? Well, you certainly have had some spectacular performances, as has he, and that would be an amazing, be amazing am matchup. Thank you, Joe. Thank I would you, love Joe. to see it. I mean, I think he should stay at 70. I think he could be a champ at 170, but he comes up here to 85, and I'm going to bang that boy up. <laughs> I'm going to bang him up, Joe. Well, shots have been fired. Kevin Holland, what a performance tonight. Enjoy this. I would love it if you got a fight in a week from now, but... Either way, can't wait to see you back in the octagon well, again. Tell them, let me know. I'm driving to Cali tonight, so if I gotta drive back here tomorrow, I'll do that. Congratulations to you, sir. How would you assess your performance tonight? Uh, definitely a big improvement from my last one, obviously. Um, didn't get jabbed to death, necessarily. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm kind of starting to come into my own a little more. Um, and I'm really... I don't know, I, I kind of love the sport again, you know. I have this huge motivation to train after the last one. And uh, yeah, I feel like I did pretty good. What did you learn about yourself between your loss against Alex Osiris and tonight? Yeah, uh, a huge thing is Alex was such a veteran. Um, he's got more UFC fights than I have years on this earth. Or uh, I think he's at 22 now. So yeah, still that still rings true. But um, Going against such a veteran, it's like a huge step up in competition, and uh, I felt like I just wasn't ready for it. I didn't have the fight IQ necessarily, um, and I feel like this time I was uh, able to be more like how I was towards the end of my jiu-jitsu competition uh, career, where I was able to be pretty calm going in there um, and kind of stay lucid the whole time and uh, understand what was going on and try to make the adjustments kind of on the fly. Do you think there are times that the media and perhaps the public forget you're only 21 years old? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, that was my thing at first is that, you know, I was the youngest guy and, um, but that wears off real quick. Um, then people just treat you like one of the other fighters. They're like, oh, this kid's not good enough. But like, uh, people need to realize that I still have another eight to 10 years until my body's even, you know, like matured all the way. So I'm still on the up and up physically. Um, so it's just kind of building that skill set, um, trying to take as little damage as possible and just kind of continuing to build myself through my fighting career. Take us to the third round tonight when you won via heel hook. Yeah, so uh, my leg was a little sore. Um, he kicked it up a little bit, but I felt like um, I didn't think that I necessarily lost both of the rounds. I thought it was a toss up. So I was like, OK, um, he was blocking, uh, you know, able to deal with my shots pretty well. Um, old Papa Ben didn't quite teach me well enough in the couple days I was out there. Um, so getting back to Wisconsin soon to go train with him. But um, yeah, I felt like that wasn't working, but I'd been working my Imanari stuff for a while um, with my guys at Combat Sport and Fitness after Ryan Hall uh, you know, showed it to me when I was training with him. And uh, you know, I kind of threw it out there because I was like, hey, it works. Um, it's really hard to defend. 
and uh, it just kind of worked out position wise. He was stuck. Um, we were both kind of stuck, but um, I obviously had the control of the position, and I just kind of bided my time until he slipped up and finished it. Chase, final question. As we turn the calendar to 2021, what is next for you? Uh, immediate future, I'm going to go back to my hotel, binge on some more M&Ms, hang out with my girlfriend, um, bulk back up, put that weight back on, enjoy the holidays, go play cyberpunk once I get home, um, and then, uh, you know, get back into the gym, get back to training. Charles Del Bronx, what you just did to Tony Ferguson was truly amazing. Olha, irmão, vê só. Deus é maravilhoso na minha vida. Eu fui o único cara que aceitou. Peguei essa luta com 20 dias, sabia que ia ser uma luta duríssima. Mas vocês viram, eu tô chegando. O cinturão é meu, 2021 eu tô chegando. I was the only guy to accept this fight, you know, last minute. I knew it was going to be a really tough fight, but 2021, I'm coming. Really tough fight. It was one of the best performances I've ever seen. I mean, what you did to a guy in Tony Ferguson who's been one of the most dominant forces in the lightweight division, you controlled every single aspect of the fight. The stand-up, the ground, you almost submitted him. And were you surprised that he didn't tap from that arm bar? Olha, aquele lá, claro que não. Ele é um campeão. Ele é o campeão interino dessa categoria, ele é duríssimo, ele não ia bater, eu sabia disso. Por isso eu vim pra cá fazer história, eu falei, eu vou chocar o mundo. Foi uma das minhas melhores performances, eu tentei pegar, eu tentei nocautear, eu fiz acontecer. Olha só, fala você pra mim, quem dominou ele desse jeito aqui dentro do octógono? Ninguém, só eu. Jesus é maravilhoso, irmão. Ele é um campeão, você sabe, ele é o interim campeão, eu sabia que ele não ia bater. Eu vim aqui para fazer isso e você me diz quem ele dominou ele assim. Ninguém, ninguém dominou ele assim e ninguém fez um melhor caso de ser o campeão de ser o top contender na divisão de divisão. Obviamente, isso é uma divisão de divisão. Você tem o Conor McGregor, que está lutando contra o Dustin Poirier. Você tem o Justin Gagey. Você tem o Khabib Nurmagomedov. Não estamos realmente seguros se ele está realmente retirado. Mas, meu amigo, você está no topo da heap. Você está right in com essas pessoas. With those fighters right now. Olha, o patrão já falou, ele falou essa semana que ele achava que quem passasse dessa luta era o seu próximo desafiante. Eu mostrei, eu tô aqui. Olha só, eu não quero saber, cara. Em janeiro, quando o McGregor deixa correr pra eu estar lutando, eu vou estar sentado na primeira fila esperando que os dois vão vir. Pode vir, irmão, mas vem online, que o pai tá pronto. The boss already said whoever won this fight would be in a great position in first place to fight for the belt. And, you know, when Connor and Poirier fight in January, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to just be waiting to see who's going to fight me. No question, Charles, because it wasn't just that you won. It's the way you won. Amazing. Congratulations. It was an honor to call your fight. Obrigado, Jesus. O bravo tem nome, Jesus. Charles Oliveira tá chegando. Chute box, maga gol de team DNA. É nóis. Pode vir, filho. Mas vem, mas vem você vem sem entender nada, porque nós tá pronto. É isso. I have to thank God, you know, Charles is coming. Thank you, Shootbox, everyone. Come prepared because I'm coming.